Hey you guys, it's me again, back with yet another book review. Just like my last few, um, I've been doing some stuff that just kind of came up on Kindle Unlimited, so I'm just kind of scrolling through there and looking for highly rated stuff or stuff people have recommended to me and stuff like that. So the one that I read this week, man, this was a good one. And I had actually never heard of this author. Um, I think she's written uh, several books, I think six, seven, eight, something like that, kind of all set around the Seattle area where she lives, although I think she's originally from Toronto. Her name is Jennifer Hillier. And this book is called Jar of Hearts. Now, I guess there was a song called that because she does kind of like quote it in there. So that's where she got the title from. But I think one of the things that attracted me to this book in particular, because I was scrolling through all the stuff on Kindle Unlimited and this one, the cover is really cool. Like actually the couple versions of the cover are really cool. And this one was like very, very, very highly rated. I don't even think, I didn't read all the Goodreads reviews because there's a shit ton, but it really did seem that all of them pretty much were in the four and a half to five star range. And that's probably where I would put this one as well because this book it's funny because I started reading it and I was just kind of like oh I'll just you know read for half an hour an hour until I go and do something else <laughs> on, on New Year's Day I started it and uh, I ended up reading the whole entire book in one sitting because it, it's pretty long and I couldn't like because I couldn't stop I was just kind of like it was really it was one of those really like compulsive reads where it's just kind of like, oh, it's just like you don't even want to like get up and go to the bathroom and stuff like that. So it's like, it's really, really good. So it's a thriller. Um, apparently it was kind of, it got a lot of buzz, I think when it first came out. I think it came out back in summer of 2018 and it won like a couple of awards the following year. But I remember, I mean, I don't remember this actually, but I remember like a lot of people talking about it like at the time that it came out and I just didn't get around to it. I really like, I do like thrillers, but I tend to, I tend to go more toward like pure horror first because some thrillers, I like a lot of thrillers, like I said, but a lot of thrillers tend to toward kind of like more of a, I don't really mean, mean to sound this, <laughs> this to sound derogatory, but it does sound, it, they kind of go a little bit more in like the lifetime movie direction because I guess they know like a lot of, you know, a, a lot, they have a lot of female readers that read that genre. So they do kind of tend to go that way. This one uh, does not really have anything like that. Honestly, this one, it's pretty gruesome. And uh, I'm going to say right here, if, if you're bothered by um, sort of fairly graphic descriptions of rape, uh, there are a couple of those in here. Murders of children, rape, murder, and dismemberment of women, one attempted rape that was also incestuous, and also the main character is in love with someone who turns who turned out to be a serial killer. And so there's kind of like a bunch of really fucked up relationships going on in this, but that was actually one of the reasons I loved it. The main character in this, whose name is Georgina, or Geo for short, is she's a great character because she's really complex and you really do kind of like get inside her head. This isn't from first person. It basically switches back and forth. It's mostly from her point of view, but it also um, goes back and forth to the point of view of one of the cops who's investigating it, whose name is Kaiser. And he's actually a, a childhood friend of hers. Like they used to be besties back in the day. So there's kind of that whole complicating issue as well. But she's such a great character because I don't want to say she's unlikable. She's not. But you still, it's, uh, this is why this is such a great book. You still kind of feel bad for her. You, you feel like a lot of emotions for her, even though she did some really, really shitty things and made some really, really terrible, stupid decisions, which kind of like ruined her whole life, you know? So, so I'm going to say, so the characterization in this was just uh, was amazing, especially of her character. She's just a really, you really just want to keep reading about her because she's just like a fascinating person and like her psychology is really fascinating. So what we have now, this is another book. I didn't know. All I knew was it was a thriller and it was kind of like serial killer adjacent. And I was just kind of like, okay, whatever. And it had like a whole bunch of really good reviews. So I said, okay, well, that's the next one I'm going to read. So I didn't really even read the description and I will recommend as I usually do, whether it's books, movies, anything, I like reading books, watching movies, not knowing or knowing as little as possible about them. Like maybe just the genre or, oh, it's a monster movie or whatever. Um, and then I just kind of let it take me on a journey. 
Uh, however, obviously, since I'm going to be talking about it, I, I am going to, so I'm not going to spoil the end or anything like that or any of the big twists and turns, but in describing how the plot goes, um, it might spoil some things along the way. So if you want to read this book and don't want to know anything about it, obviously, what the fuck are you even doing watching this video? But I'm just warning you ahead of time. As I said, I'm not going to spoil the ending, but you know, I will like mention some stuff from the plot. So if you don't want to know anything about it, then go read it. You can read it for free if you have Kindle Unlimited, uh, or obviously you can buy the paperback or get the audiobook or whatever. So as I said, this seemed like it was a really popular read right around when it came out, like a very popular summer read, I guess, for for fucked up people like me <laughs> who like like really horror like true crime type of shit but yeah this is kind of what everybody was reading uh back in the summer of 2018 so as i said our main character is a woman named georgina shaw now at the very beginning you know that she did something kind of bad because pretty much from like the first scene i believe is her testifying at a trial now, the trial is for a dude named Calvin James, who is a serial killer. You find out pretty soon in the story that Calvin and Georgina were boyfriend and girlfriend back in high school days, although she was much younger than him. She was, I believe, 16 when she met him. He was 21. So there was that. So she was like going out with the older guy. As I said, this is set around the Seattle, Washington uh, type area. And some of it, it, it basically, it just jumps back and forth from like high school days to, uh, you know, kind of telling you what happened back then to modern day. And it kind of jumps around in time a lot, you know, a little bit, but not really all that much. So, uh, so yeah, so she's testifying at the trial and they establish almost immediately that she must have done something to help him or something like that because she has she got a plea deal. So she's actually going to be in prison for five years, uh, even though she's testifying uh, to get him, you know, uh, put in prison for life for being a serial killer. And he's up for four murders. Now, one of these murders, the first one, is the one that you're assuming that she was... Uh, involved in in some way as the story goes on you don't really find out to what extent she was involved in the murder um, you know that's something that's sort of slowly revealed and later on in the story uh, it actually does do like an extended for of exactly what happened but uh, so she kind of keeps it close to the vest so she's um, you know she's at the trial she does her deal and then uh, she goes back and they put her in jail because that's what the plea deal was. And before she goes, though, like when she's in the in the courtroom, the serial killer, Calvin, who was her ex-boyfriend. Now, she hasn't seen him for many years. Um, he slips her a note and all the note says is you're welcome. So, like I said, pretty much from early on in the story, you know that she was involved somehow and then perhaps he's implying that he's taking the fall for her or something of that nature like i said it's slowly revealed as the story goes on so what ends up happening so georgina even though she was maybe maybe not she had this boyfriend in high school who turned out to be a serial killer later on he's actually like uh killed several women and uh raped and killed several women in the meantime like since she was you know since they parted company when uh you know many years ago so in the meantime though uh she has become very very successful and she knows that by giving this plea deal and going to prison for five years and be being associated publicly with this serial killer that essentially her life before which was idyllic like a fantasy lifestyle is over uh she had worked her way up in a pharmaceuticals company and was now like the vice president or something and she was actually engaged to be married to the guy that ran the company, this fabulously wealthy guy. Like she had like a really nice car. She had all of this stuff, you know, and she was quite young. I think she's only 30 years old. So she was in all the business world. She was very like a, a big deal, like how she's so high up in this company and being so young and being a woman and all this other kind of stuff. So she is like a kind of a public face of this company. So when it comes out, that uh, that she was involved in the serial killer because what ended up happening was that the first crime that was committed, uh, the first 
girl that was raped and murdered was her best friend in high school. Because of her involvement, they didn't find the girl's body for like 14 years. So that's why Georgina has been able to build this whole entire life um, because... You know, they the body wasn't found until much later, and then, you know, they found out what her involvement was, and then she ends up getting arrested. So after the trial, there's kind of an extended... This book is actually divided into five sections, which are kind of like different stages of grief. They're called that. So, um, so that's kind of the first part. And then the second part is actually her doing her time in prison. That's actually a really good uh, section, too, because you're kind of seeing, like, all the sort of shit she puts, like, all the abuse she puts up with, like, what it's like in there. And then she kind of ends up, you know, making friends with sort of like a higher up, like, higher ranking prisoner that's very powerful and has a lot of friends on the outside. So she kind of gets in with that because she was such a high powered, like, business executive. You know, she can do financial shit for people and everything. So she, like, starts doing favors. So then after five years, she gets out of prison and then has to go back to her hometown. And she's going back to live with her dad because obviously her, uh, you know, fiance abandoned her. Uh, all her money is pretty much gone. Uh, she can't really get a job uh, anymore because everybody knows who she is. She's like notorious. And so, uh, so she's kind of fucked. So she goes back and lives in her childhood home in her dad's house. And then, you know, like the dad's house is getting vandalized and all this other stuff. Cause like I said, everybody knows who she is and she has like a really bad reputation now because, you know, she was involved with this serial killer, even though it happened when she was a teenager. And even though he was obviously very controlling and abusive, but she did, she, even though she was only 16 when she did the dumb shit that she did, it was still pretty, like, some pretty dumb shit, and she could have, like, fixed it at any point, and she really kind of hurt a lot of people, but that's sort of, like, the point of the book is that you do sympathize with her because she was just, like, a dumb teenager, and you could see yourself getting into that situation, but her basically you know, just kind of compounding the error, like, as it went on, pretty much, like I said, it's essentially, like, ruined her whole entire life. And so the book is really good at showing that, how just this one stupid decision that you made or this one person that you knew, even when you were a teenager, like, it, you know, you just keep, if you just keep lying and, like, compounding your error and shit like that, it just makes your life spiral out of control in, like, horrible ways that probably you didn't foresee. So, so that was kind of, like, the thing, too. So when she gets out... Um, you know, it's kind of like this big, you know, fucking nightmare. She can't find a job or anything. And her dad's kind of getting his house fucked with and everything because she's there. And, you know, all the people that she used to know in the town are just like shunning her now. And it turns out that her best friend from high school, uh, not, you know, because her, the girl that got killed back in high school and it was named Angela. And she was kind of like the, the queen bee type girl. And her and Georgina hung out and then they hung out with this other guy named Kaiser. And Kaiser was in love with Georgina like back in the day. But Georgina kind of like friend zoned him and was going out with Calvin, who became a serial killer later on. And it was like this horrible fucked up up uh, abusive situation that she was in but kaiser was pretty cool about it um he did go a little nice guy but not really so kaiser now that everyone's grown up kaiser is now a cop and he's actually the one that investigated and he's the one that helped like did the uh investigation like when they found angela's body finally after 14 years and stuff so obviously he's still kind of carrying a torch for georgina and now that it's this much this many years later, and he knows that Georgina was involved in Angela's murder somehow, although he's not quite sure what the extent of her involvement was. So his uh, feelings about her are very conflicted. Now, into this situation, it appears uh, Calvin actually escapes from prison. Uh, he was on, he wasn't on death row, but he had was serving like multiple life sentences. So he actually escapes from prison, and then another series of murders starts up that maybe suggests that Calvin is either killing again or there's somebody doing a copycat thing or Calvin is trying to get Georgina's attention because he knows that she's out of prison now too. But the MO of the crimes is sort of like his ones, but sort of different. So that's kind of how the rest of the book goes where it's this new series of murders, this new investigation, and Georgina 
feeling like she's being targeted by Calvin because, you know, he's presumably killing again or trying to get her attention uh, by doing these particular things. Like, he'll kill, he starts killing, like, a series of women and children, like, little kids, like, two, three, four years old, and he, like, leaves messages, like, on their bodies, and they're ostensibly for her. So that's kind of where it goes. So it's so like I said, it goes back and forth between her and Kaiser, who's the cop that's investigating it, who's got his own fucking problems going on too. Like he's having an affair, and well, he's not married, but his the woman he's having an affair with is married, and also they work together. So he hasn't, you know, he, he's doing a lot better than Georgina, but he's kind of like fucked up too. So everyone in this is kind of fucked up, but this was. I mean, this was one of those books where, like I said, I sat down to read it and literally I was just going to be like, oh, okay, well, I'll just get, I'll start this. Like, I'll just read a chapter or two. And I ended up reading the whole entire book. You know what I mean? Uh, On New Year's Day. Because I was like, well, it's New Year's Day. It's kind of a holiday. And and I just kept reading and reading reading because I couldn't stop. And man, it is so good. Like, the characterization is so good. I didn't really see, it's like, this story has so many, like, twists and turns and most of them I did not see coming. One of them I did, but I didn't see it coming until maybe like a when you were kind of supposed to see it coming, I guess. It's, you know what I mean? Uh, I didn't really call it like super early in the story, but it just goes in all of these ways that you're not really expecting it to go. And it's great. I mean, it's just, and now, like I said, it's, it's a thriller, but it definitely has some pretty grisly, some pretty gruesome shit. So as I said, if you're really bothered by fairly graphic de- descriptions of rapes and stuff like that, um, this might not be the book for you. It's not gory, but you know, st- stuff is described like pretty, you know, pretty straightforwardly. Um, there's several rapes in this, like I said, and there's uh, one attempted rape, which as I mentioned is also incestuous and it's you know babies are killed like two three four year old kids are killed women are killed and cut up so you know uh if that bothers you then maybe this isn't because this is a definitely like more on the graphic grisly end some more on the horror end of thriller rather than the kind of just like regular you know sexy time kind of thriller this is not everybody in this is i don't want to say everyone in this is terrible but (laughs) Everyone in this is very, they have terrible aspects to their character, like pretty much everybody. So all the characters were really, really good because they were all really complex, not necessarily likable. Like a lot of them, like I said, did really terrible, awful things, but you could still kind of, you still saw the humanity in all of them, you know what I mean? Which was kind of great. I mean, even the guy that was the serial killer, Calvin, uh, he was obviously like a horrible, horrible person, but you still, there was still, like, a glimmer of humanity there. You didn't feel sad for him, or you didn't, like, you weren't sympathetic toward him or anything like that, but you could see that he was still, like, a human being, and he, and he seemed, I guess because he was seemed kind of aware that what he was doing was really bad, um, but he seemed like he couldn't really stop himself. So, but like I said, it's he's not portrayed sympathetically by any stretch of the imagination, but everybody in this has you know, really shitty things about their character, but everybody's kind of like realistically portrayed, you know what I mean? So I think that's what I really liked about it was like the characterization. And I really loved like all the twists and turns that the story took. And I, you know, the outcome of it, I didn't really see where it was going, you know what I mean? Which I thought was like really, really cool. But it's really one of those books. I know it's like kind of a cliche to say, oh, I couldn't put it down. It's like, but I literally could not. I mean, I was reading the ebook, so like off my computer screen. So it's not like I'm putting it down like a literal book. But I literally, like, I couldn't like pull my face away from the screen because I was just kind of like, okay, I'll just get to read one more chapter. No, now what's happening? You know what I mean? But it's just like really good. I loved all the character interactions, just so, so good. So I can see why uh, this got pretty much overwhelmingly awesome reviews because this is one of the most compulsively readable books I think I've read in a very long time that I just kind of sat and read the whole however many pages with 300 400 pages it was and I just sat there and read the whole fucking thing like in one sitting without like without even hardly getting up but that's how that's how good it was so as I said, um, if you're really into thrillers that are more on the serial killer graphic sort of end, and if you don't mind um, sort of graphic depictions of rape, child murder, dismemberment, and also like some really fucked up 
relationship dynamics in the sense that of, you know, a, a teenage girl being essentially like in love with a serial killer and still kind of being in love with him even after she found out what he did. Uh, so if that's going to bother you, then probably get, skip this one. But if it's not going to bother you, if that sounds like something that's up your alley, then this is a really, really good really good book. I mean, I had a really good time with this one. Uh, so yeah, that will do it for this Tomes of Terror. I will see you guys on the next one. Bye.